Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I am joined by senior on the Coastal Carolina women's lacrosse team, Devin Rybacki. In her lacrosse career, Devin made it on the 2022 A-Sun All-Freshman team, was a 2021 USA Lacrosse All-American, first ever at Camden Catholic High School. Devin also helped lead her team to become a three-time Olympic Conference Championships in high school. Uh, last season, Devin, ha- Devin had six goals and two assists, had an impressive 55 draw control wins, scooped up 15 ground balls, and caused nine turnovers during the season, which helped lead the team to an A-Sun championship. Uh, Devin, welcome to the Draw Control Podcast, and how is everything going? Great. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here again. Like we were saying, it's a good time for this. There's been a lot that happened this past season I'm excited to chat about. And yeah, I can't believe I'm a senior. That sounds so weird when I hear it from someone else. Oh, yeah. Do you feel like a senior yet or is it still won't hit until like you get back to school and you know it's your final fall semester? It's slowly beginning to hit me now but I think once I get back to school especially when the season starts um it's really gonna hit yeah but right now I'm just all in (laughs) how's your summer going so far have you been doing anything interesting whether it's lacrosse related or not yeah so I'm in Conway where Coastal Carolina is with a couple of my teammates and we all work at the same restaurant so we basically the Coastal Women's Lacrosse team runs this little beach restaurant we all work together we all work out together we're kind of just always around each other which I think is great um and that's I live with two other lacrosse girls right now so we're always just with each other and we never get sick of each other they're my best friends and it's nice to have to work out with over the summer we get to push each other we don't kind of lay around and be lazy so I'm very grateful for that that's awesome that sounds like a lot of fun at the restaurant even though it's probably a very stressful job I would imagine yeah, it's 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 definitely a fast paced job, but our manager is very grateful to have athletes working for him because we're just always hustling. So now you mentioned that you're with your teammates working out and training. I'm just curious, what are some things you're working on uh, for the upcoming season? Um, a big thing for me this year is just maintaining my speed. Um, I'm the only upperclassman midfielder returning, so that's just a big role to fill. Um, A lot of girls, you know, they'll come in as midfielders and then get either pushed to offense or defense, whatever they feel more comfortable with, like comfortable with. So being a midfielder is just running and getting your feet under you, kind of knowing where your role is on the field. So that's what I'm trying to just get prepared for now. So once the fall starts, I'm comfortable with kind of doing everything again. And my um, two roommates that are here, Bridget Cardillo, she's number zero. She's an attacker. And then Charlotte Sadler is our starting goalie. So we kind of have a good, like, balance. So they're really fun to work with. Yeah. And obviously, like we mentioned before, you're a senior next year. So being one of the only returning midfielders on the team and having uh, very a lot of experience on the team as well, have you thought about what type of leadership you wanted to bring to the team? Would you consider yourself more of a vocal leader or lead by example type of player, especially uh, with the role that you're going to have next year? Yeah, I definitely lead by example. Um, I've just always been a practice what you preach kind of girl. And sometimes vocal leaders do not follow up to what they say. And those are the leaders that people don't follow. But the ones that people follow, like do the right thing. They're just showing you without even having to speak. You kind of just naturally follow them. So hopefully I've done that my junior year. I want to continue that my senior year, hopefully be a captain and just kind of lead the team to another A-Sun championship and definitely just do the right things, like show the freshmen kind of the ropes when they come in, because that was really important to me when I was a freshman. You don't want to be scared of the upperclassmen. I don't want them to be scared of me. I want to just take them in as a family. So definitely lead by example um I have I'm pretty vocal but never in anything too serious I'm a very happy positive person um I guess a lot of my consider me that too so yeah that's awesome and obviously have you had the chance to meet any of the incoming freshmen I assume maybe in passing when they're going on their visits but I'm just curious if you guys how do you sort of connect with the new players um, on your team They, so I have taken a couple of them when they were on their visits their junior year. So I think right before they committed, 
I've taken a few around campus and like talked to their families. And then last summer, a couple of them came to our camp that we hold in the summer. And it was nice to meet them too. But usually we kind of just try to text them, keep them in the loop. We have group chats. We do a lot of like team bonding over the summer to kind of like initiate the freshmen into the team and just make them know kind of like what our culture is about. So we have like workout group chats with like all different ages from like freshmen to seniors. And we're like filling each other in on our workouts. We do challenges for like points over the summer, like wall ball points. And like the freshmen can feel comfortable like sending in pictures of them and like videos of like their lacrosse stuff. So we kind of just keep the group chat popping in the summer to That's just good. like comfortable. So now I have to ask, do you kick the leaving players out of the group chat and add the freshmen or do you create a new season group chat? That's something that not a lot of people think about uh, when it's yeah. like, in regards to behind the scenes of a lacrosse team. Yeah, we, we make a full new group chat um, just because, I don't know, like it's sad to see the seniors get kicked out or it's just very yeah. like, I don't know, it's very obvious. And like the seniors this year, like we were really sad to see them leave. So like, we still text in our group chat from last season, but like yeah. we also have a new one with the freshmen this season. So it's kind of like fresh start, I would say. Exactly, exactly. Do you have any transfers coming into your team as well next year? Because I feel like that's starting to become a big part of college across now. Yeah, we have one junior defender. Her name's Grace Lord, and she came from LaSalle. And I haven't really gotten the chance to talk to her, but a few um, girls on my team met her and I'm really excited. Like she's going to be a great addition to our team. So that'll be really great. So let's transition now and talk about the beginning of your career and sort of work all the way up to where you are today. So you're from New Jersey. Talk about growing up there and how you start playing lacrosse. So I started playing lacrosse. I always had a lacrosse stick in my hands. Um, my mom played at the Division Three level, um, Rowan University in New Jersey. She played lacrosse and basketball there. So I've kind of always been like thrown into sports and like always playing with my older brother, just like playing around. I started playing lacrosse in fourth grade, like on a legit team. And I loved it. Like, it was just a sport I thrived in. Basketball was always my favorite, though, up until, like, eighth grade. And then lacrosse just took over fully. Um, I played just for my town league and then went to Camden Catholic, which is just a private school out of my town for lacrosse and a better education. And, yeah, I loved it there. I loved living in my town. I loved playing lacrosse there. I wouldn't be who I am right now without it. And growing up, who was your favorite lacrosse player or team that you like to watch? This is a funny question because I never was, like, super, like, into watching lacrosse. I never, like, I don't know. I didn't think it was, like, that big of a deal. Not towards me. I just was playing other sports, and I didn't think of lacrosse as that. But once I got into high school, I loved – um like Marie McCool, because she's from Morristown, like she's just like a local legend to me. Um, Gianna Bo, she played at UNC, and then Alex Oss played at Maryland. And those girls have just been like someone I always looked up to, and they're still so popular in the lacrosse world, and they're still such great athletes. So I still look up to them to this day. But um, yeah, I definitely would say Maryland was my dream school yeah. when I was like, I think that's typical for girls my age when we were little. Oh, yeah. I saw a viral video of um, Alex Ost uh, sort of having the headset on, talking to her husband. Yeah. I thought that, that was really funny. I don't know if you saw that or not. Yeah, and the, he, like, scored the goal. Yeah, she, I thought that was cool. They, they were mic'd up together. Yeah, they're, like, a power couple. I think that's so awesome. Like, she's also the sweetest human being. Like, she coached one of my, like, WPLL teams and she was just so happy and so fun and bubbly I was like I want to be like her when I'm older so yeah that's awesome and it's cool that you have other athletes in your family would you say that your mom's the best athlete of your family or would you say you've passed her up on the throne I have to say I passed her up but <laughs> that's just me and she's supported me the whole way like her goal in life was to make me better than her and she mm -hmm. did that she coached me in lacrosse and basketball. Like she taught me so much, just like the ways of life. 
outside of sports, which then helped me in my sport. So I think she would agree that I've passed her, but she'd be proud of it. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Maybe she could say she's the best basketball player in the family. You could say you're the you know best lacrosse player. Well, well, the best. <laughs> You could still. <laughs> now, like you mentioned before, college you played for your high school at Camden Catholic. Uh, just just talk mm -hmm. a little bit about your high school lacrosse experience, what you took away from it, and what would you say is like the best memory you have from your high school lacrosse days when you look back on it now? Yeah, so I actually kind of had a crazy lacrosse experience in high school. So I started since my freshman year. I came in just like really focusing on lacrosse it was I played volleyball and basketball and then it was finally time for lacrosse so I really had to focus up started my freshman year scored my 100th goal my sophomore year kind of just I lost my junior year due to COVID which was really really sad that kind of like made me realize that like got to play every game like it's your last because you never know came in starting my senior year. This is a crazy story. My high school lacrosse coach um, was arrested and fired because she was um, having a relationship with a student at my school. Oh, wow. It was really, I was an incoming senior, just really excited. I was only playing lacrosse my senior year, already committed to Coastal. And then this happened. And I was like, what the heck? Like my world just totally changed. Like, she was like my best friend. Um, it was really difficult for me and my team. So all of the seniors that year, like we really had to step up and come together. And that's when I truly like felt like my form as a leader for the team because every no one knew what to do. It was really, really hard. So we came in that year. We didn't care about all the rumors or all the posts that were being sent to us in the news articles. We just stayed focused and we had a great senior year. We weren't the best team. But like the culture we had was amazing. And I think that set me up really well for college lacrosse. Yeah. And also just sort of the adversity you dealt with, obviously the COVID adversity, which everyone uh, went through, but just sort of that, like, I assume it was very unexpected. Like it's sort of like you think, you know, someone and then like, boom, something yeah. happens that you but didn't expect. Good people, like, good people do bad things. And I still believe she's a great woman to this day. And I know like people have their struggles and I know that, Hopefully she's doing well now. I mean, those people you just kind of have to say an extra prayer for and hope for the best, but it's really unfortunate, but definitely like that struggle that I felt made me a stronger woman today and a better lacrosse player and teammate. So I'm, I'm grateful for things like that. I'll always just take them head on and yeah. Well, let's talk about, let's go on to a little more of a happier topic and let's just talk about your recruiting process with Coastal Carolina. Uh, what was that like for yourself and what made you want to go there versus other schools you might have looked at? So Coastal was one of the only colleges I did like a summer camp at. Like, so going into my junior year summer, like big recruiting summer, I wanted to go to Coastal Carolina. A Camden Catholic alumni currently was playing there. Her name was Megan Kilpatrick. And she kind of like broke me into Coastal and like made me realize how great of a school it was. So I came with my dad. We did the whole campus tour, did the camp. I got MVP of the camp, which was really awesome. Um, and then did some other summer camps, had a great summer. September 1st came and I kind of like put Coastal on the back burner because I knew what Coastal was like already. So I wanted to go check out all these other schools. I went to California, I went to a lot of New Jersey schools, um, and I was just kind of waiting and waiting. And then I was like, I love Coastal, like these other schools aren't sticking out to me. Their programs don't feel as like meshed as Coastal did. So I went on my official visit at Coastal and I committed about two weeks after. And um, I it just felt right. And I'm so glad I did it. I couldn't see myself anywhere else, but I enjoyed the recruiting process so much. I keep telling the younger girls, like, enjoy it and just don't get stressed. Like, just enjoy the ride because wherever you end up, like, you'll thrive. And it's really fun. Yeah. Well, the recruiting process feels a lot different now because back in the day, it was sort of like sporadic of when players from different classes would commit. Now it feels like the mm -hmm. date opens and like everyone commits at the same time. Uh, just because yeah. of the new rule change, which I'm glad they did it, but it just feels like day one, everyone goes. So I always feel bad for those players that 
uh, feel like they're not getting enough looks because it seems like everyone commits yeah. on that first day. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely like I didn't commit until the end of October, I think. And even then I was like, time's ticking. Like I got to go quick and I'm, you really didn't. But if you have money kind of hanging over your head or you have other teams talking to you or they only have a limited amount of spots on the roster, like you have to make your mind up quick, which mm -hmm. is unfortunate. But again, it's, it's all about the process and the ride. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what was sort of the biggest adjustment you had to make to college across once you arrived on campus? Definitely just overall my discipline. I came from being the best player on my high school team, an All-American, kind of thinking I was the good big girl. Like I was I was it in high school. And I knew that when I came to Coastal, like, all of those girls were the best players in high school. All of those girls were like all Americans, all conference, breaking records. It wasn't just me. So I kind of had to check myself and realize like these girls are good. You need like I needed to be disciplined within myself and be coachable. And kind of since that fall, I had a big realization that like if I want to continue and be successful, like I have to sacrifice some things and really lock in. And thankfully, my mindset did that. And I came in freshman year and I I felt very comfortable and I just tried my hardest and got some playing time which was really amazing um but yeah I would just say if you're coming in as a freshman just be coachable just say yes just do what you're told try really hard and like things will fall into into place now you get to play in the a Sun conference uh talk about that conference just the competition you face each game I feel like it's a uh, bit of an underrated conference because I feel like you guys have obviously been doing very well lately, but you also have teams like Jacksonville as well who have done really well in out-of-conference games as well. So uh, what's it just like being a part of that conference and uh, sort of trying to prove uh, – Try to, when you play those out-of-conference games, it must feel nice to sort of try to prove that the a Sun's a legit conference just like other D1 conferences as well. Yeah, um, I love the a Sun conference. You know, I feel like the big three, it's always – Coastal Carolina, Jacksonville, and Liberty. And we're always, it's the, those are our rivals. We're always out for blood. The other teams are great. They're well coached. Um, they have great recruiting skills. Like they're always great teams. Um, it's awesome. I feel like when we play teams out of conference, like you were saying, there's something to prove. Like when we beat Vanderbilt this year, it was like, wow, like we are a good team in a good conference. And there was just this feeling like we all knew we could take it home this year, come home with a ring and a trophy and doing so made us realize that there's more to this team than just losing first round of NCAA tournament. Like we won our conference. Like now we want to win more. We want to beat Notre Dame. We want to beat this like team. We play second round. There's more to it than just the a -son, which was really eye opening to me. Um, but I hope other teams realize, like, Coastal Carolina, we were on that, like, having our watch party. Like, that was the first time we've ever been there. And I don't think people are used to seeing our name. So if we kind of keep that going and keep winning these out-of-conference games, like, we let some slip up this past season. Mercer, Davidson, and um, Vermont. If we finish those games out we easily could have been ranked higher and kind of had a little more recognition so that's our goal for this next season now one thing I noticed was how your team improved significantly from your freshman year to your sophomore year and then obviously to your junior year uh let's go a little bit between your freshman and sophomore year though because that's the most significant improvement that your team had going from six to 12 wins what would you say sort of led your team to have the success you had uh sort of in that time frame and why would you well and from your perspective how do you think your team has gotten better over the year three years with coastal carolina so far yeah so freshman year um we had new coaching staff um rachel witten sam jackalone and aaron fitzgerald came from Furman. um so they were new for everyone new for me as a freshman new for the seniors so I think freshman year was kind of like figuring it out with the girls that we had. Um, she brought in great um, recruits from Furman. We had Avery McElwain, Sid McClure, 
Hannah Demis and Avery Whitehead. And so those were four girls they brought from Furman. So freshman year, we were figuring it out. Um, I think we didn't really know what our team dynamic was. Uh, considering I was a freshman, I didn't really know what anything meant. I didn't know who was the captain. Who We didn't have captains. We didn't have specific leaders. And then once that season ended, we realized, all right, if we want to get better, we kind of need some guidance. And so the not everyone, like everyone stepped up, coaches to the bench, like we all kind of took it as it is and rose above and sophomore year was definitely better. Um, that year I was kind of just a FOGO for the team and I was taking on different roles and I just did it with a smile on my face because I knew it was bettering the team. And I, it was it was a great, great transition. And then I feel like that led into junior year and now we have it figured out. So it's kind of just riding this wave of getting better and dominating. But it's crazy to see the drastic change from freshman to junior year. Yeah, and individually, what would you say is the biggest improvement you've made to your game? Because looking at your statistics, it seemed like you were more of an offensive player earlier in your college career, but now you've become more of a draw control taker and a defensive player as you've gone on. So I'm curious, sort of, what would you say has sort of been the biggest improvement your, to your game? To me, it seems like your versatility because you're already good offensively. Now you just improve your defensive game even more throughout your sophomore and junior year. Yeah, I would say defensively, I figured it out this year. Um, my coach, Sam, re we really worked together this year. I never thought I could be a defensive threat at this level. I never really thought of defense in that way. And now I love it. Like, I love running back on defense. I want to guard, like, one of the best girls. Like, there's – I would rather, like, cause a turnover than score a goal just because that feeling is just as great. And then I just think I'm playing offense. I can trust my attackers. But after I'm done playing offense, I have to run all the way down the field and play defense. And I, like, almost felt like I was saving myself on the offensive end to play defense. So this year I want to make sure I can – give it all out on offense, run back and give it all out on defense because I kind of was like hesitant towards that. So that's something I'm going to put together this year, still help on the draw and just kind of be an overall midfield threat instead of just dipping my toes in one side of the field and then going out on one, the other side. It's just, I need to put it all together. Now, one moment from your sophomore year that I want to talk to you about was in the tournament, you guys lost to Jacksonville. And I just want to ask you, what did you take away from your team's performance your sophomore year? And what did you feel, what did you learn from that specific game against Jacksonville that you felt like helped your team out uh, in this past season? Yeah, that game against Jacksonville, we definitely, we would let teams slip up from us so quick and easy in that first quarter. We would be down by six, seven, eight goals and just be in this hole that we would just shrug our shoulders and be like, we're not getting out of this one. And then there would be some fight and we would score some goals and it'd be like, we could have done this the whole time. And I think a big thing this year with Jacksonville and those high level games is you have to come out, like just blazing, like go into the goal. We already knew our game plan. And once we get into a hole, we know how to get ourselves out of it. And that was huge for us. Um, offensively this year, we played a huge possession game. A lot of our games that we won were low scoring, um, except Mercer. I, that game was crazy. Um, a lot of them were low scoring, and we just would get the ball, hold it, be patient, run our offensive plays, and they would work. And then our defense would have come up with huge stops. A lot of stuff in the past was rushed and wasn't settled and just felt very uncomfortable. We would kind of look at each other on offense like, you do it or you do it. I don't know what to do. And now it's like, all right, we know what's going on. And I think that really like the coaching from Rachel Witten has just been like phenomenal. Um, she's improved, like we've improved with her. And I think we figured out kind of like our sweet spot of attack and running through the midfield and then even on the defensive end. Now this past season, obviously you guys won the Ace Sun Championship, beating your biggest rival in Jacksonville University. Uh, just talk about winning that championship and sort of what it meant to you, because we obviously talked about things that you've gone through individually and as a team to sort of get to that point. And also just sort of proving a lot of people wrong. I felt like a lot of people thought Jacksonville was sort of penciled in to win that game. And it must have felt nice to sort of uh, 
show all the pundits wrong that Coastal Carolina deserves uh, to be in that tournament? Yeah, so we, just as a team, we would watch all of our conference games together. We'd watch Liberty play Queens, like Queens play Jacksonville, and all the announcers would just talk about Jacksonville and how they're going to win, and they're it's going to be so easy for them. And we just would look at each other and be like, what the, like there was nothing ever mentioned about Coastal Carolina. And I think that just like got everyone wound up and we were just really, really hungry. And I mean, that game, we, there were so many emotions before it. We're like so excited. We're crying in the locker room. We're like hugging each other, just like crying. And we're, like our coach would have the best pregame speeches that like we would sit there and cry because we were so excited. And that just like as a team, like walking out on that field in our pairs and just all the parents there cheering for you. And we get out on the field and the Jacksonville parents are like talking really bad to us and they're not being very nice. And it's just like inspiring us to get better and better. And you could just tell like the tension was so strong on the field. And like that game was just like a game where I didn't get tired. Like I just wanted to keep playing and I just remember that feeling when the buzzer went off and like we were all crying, running to our goalie. I couldn't breathe. We like it was just such a surreal moment that like I had one more game with the girls, basically. Um, yeah, that's uh, from a fan perspective. That's really disappointing to hear that there were adults uh, yelling stuff at you guys. I feel like I don't know. If I'm obviously a very young person, so very long ways away to having children of my own. But I feel like I wouldn't yell at anyone's kids if I were watching my kids team play. But that's that's just me. I don't know why uh, they were doing that. Yeah, that's always I mean, again, it's just the rowdiness. Like, I'm so good at blocking that stuff out. Like the only people's voices I hear in my games is my coaches and my parents. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my mom can be a little much sometimes, but only I'm hearing it. But because Jacksonville, the way this like field was set up, it's like the field, the bleachers, but there's like, there were chairs like on the sideline that all the Jacksonville parents had. So we were like, they were just right there. It was hard to ignore, but there's no better feeling than just getting the win and kind of like, how mm -hmm. like take that. Like we're just kids having fun at this point. And that's all it is. Like that's college lacrosse. We're just young women competing and it should be respected and just lifted up as a woman's sport, not me being yelled at by some random person's parents. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's talk yeah. about that tournament game against Notre Dame. Even though you guys lost, I'm just curious what you took away from that experience of being in the tournament and also playing a really good team in Notre Dame, uh, especially from a defensive standpoint. It must have been cool to go up against players like Casey Choma and Madison Ahern because now you can tell yeah. like friends that you played against them when you see them in the Pro League uh, next year or this summer. Yeah, it was, it was definitely like – create I mean we didn't know who we were playing obviously and what having our watch party and our assistant coach was an all-american at Notre Dame so it was kind of funny how that tied in and she was really excited we were all so excited and I'm glad we went through that because we only had two days really to prepare for Notre Dame because we won and then we had the day off and then there, there was like thunderstorms here and we could barely practice and then the next day we're flying south then like ready to play Notre Dame um so now we know like where we kind of have to get our head in the game like win the a sun and then it's like all right get ready for whoever we have next round but playing Notre Dame was awesome our coach like took us on a tour of the campus it was beautiful um the girls that we played against were awesome um it was a tough game. I wish we did better, but just being on that field, I was just looking around me, feeling like I was surrounded by greatness. Like I was guarding these girls that I just wanted to be like, wow, I look up to you so much. Like this, I just wanted to talk to them. Um, and they lost, I think they lost to Michigan on that game winner last after they played us, which was kind of hard to see, but they were a great team. Um, and I think it was exciting for my coach to kind of be back there on the field and the other perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we'll get back next year. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we're now in a segment I like to call the non-lacrosse segment where I ask you some non-lacrosse questions and I'll give you some of my answers if you want me to as well so we can sort of get a conversation going. But the goal of the segment is really just to get to know you a little bit more off the field 
I feel like everyone knows you and what you're like on the field. So I think this would be a good segment to sort of get to know you a little bit off the field as well. First question cool. is if they made a Devin Rybacki movie, who would you want to play yourself? Margot Robbie. <laughs> That's a good answer. She's a very good actress. So, but... She's a great actress and she's like bubbly and just like so well known. And I loved the Barbie movie. So I, I guess I'm just biased, but I think she'd kill it. I think she'd kill it if she had a lacrosse stick in her hand for some of it. That'd be yeah. very funny. That's awesome. <laughs> I guess I'll go with a similar answer with yourself and say Ryan Gosling. I know we look nothing alike, but I just want to brag to my <laughs> friends saying that he played me in a movie and he yeah. could play me in your movie as well so they can reunite after the Barbie movie. So I think it would that make sense. Would, yeah, that would be perfect. <laughs> now, obviously, the 4th of July was a couple of weeks ago and people consider it one of the most underrated holidays in the world so in your perspective what's the most underrated holiday and what's the most overrated holiday okay most underrated holiday is thanksgiving the food is amazing i make my dad cook me like thanksgiving meals any day like they're my favorite and i love seeing my family because like i'm so thank like i'm a thankful person and like i feel like people see that from me i'm just very like I'll always say thank you. Like I'm very, I don't know, like grateful for people in my life. And I always tell people that. So a day where I can just be thankful for my family and friends is like the best day ever. And the most overrated Halloween. I agree. I feel like once trick or treating's done, uh, it's not the same anymore. Not the same. And like, especially in college and you're, especially with the lacrosse team, it's like we have plans as like who do, like the group dresses up and then you have practice halloween costumes i'm spending so much money on these costumes that i wear for an hour yeah so i'm like i i'm never enjoying halloween recently <laughs> yeah i feel like you gotta make it simple like one good one i would do yeah is wear a yellow shirt and put black duct tape on it boom you're charlie brown and you still have to spend a lot of money on that that's how you sort of that's the way i would think is do something simple yeah at this point, we kind of just rotate costumes throughout the team. I'm like, hey, can I wear your, like, whatever silly costume you wore last year? Like, we have the weirdest costumes, honestly. We don't really try. So <laughs> that makes just, it fun. You should just ask your teammate for their jersey and say you're your teammate for Halloween. That's oh. easier. I don't know if that's considered too lazy, but that's sort of what I would do, honestly. No, I would do it. That would be, we should all just dress up as each other for Halloween. And or someone dresses other. up as the coach, too. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> wait we sh i have a good idea for halloween this year we're all going to be our coaches that's that's a good idea and i don't know if any of your teammates can do a good impersonation of your coach but that would make it even funnier because i saw this one video of this guy from alabama back in the day who did a great nick saban impression and obviously when oh. nick saban wasn't around he wouldn't do he wouldn't he would do it so it was pretty funny and all the teammates yeah. loved it i think some girls could definitely <laughs> nick so I'm going to have to bring that up in the group chat. <laughs> That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting yeah. for sure. Now, you obviously have the best style on the Coastal Carolina women's lacrosse team. But besides yourself, who would you say has the best style on your team? I have to say, okay, she graduated this past year. But, like, everyone can kind of, like, agree with me. Sophia Devella, she was an attacker. She was, she was just always, like, wearing the best outfits, like, anywhere we went we'd be walking in class and she'd be having her Jordans on or just this very cute outfit but I also think Reese Allnut um she's gonna be a junior she's more like my style like she's a very beachy girl she's very cute and like I am texting her constantly that I'm gonna steal clothes out of her closet hmm. and that's just like how you know like you they got the best style when you're stealing clothes out of their closet because you want like to wear it <laughs> yeah uh next one is uh what would what is one item on your bucket list that you'd like to accomplish one day oh i want to visit all like every state basically that would be cool. i don't know i'm like but i feel like some states are boring though like what's there to do in like utah yeah. or something like that well that's the funny thing i've been to the boring states like i've okay. been to utah, montana Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, but like, there's a there's always something in those boring states. So I'm like, if I already did the boring ones, I want to go to the fun ones. Colorado so we'll seems say. fun with all the mountains and stuff. Yes, that's very just like beautiful, like 
I definitely want to go back or just travel more, even out of the country. So definitely visit all 50 states and then get out of the country a little more. Yeah, mine's similar to yours, just travel different spots, mostly in like Canada and North America. I feel like I would much yeah. rather see some of those cities before I would go out to Europe or something like that. But yeah, I feel like just like do do a road trip. I feel like that would be fun. Yeah, so it's like, and it's just so easy, especially, I mean, being an athlete, I'm like never free. So the only time I can really do that is the summertime or like yeah. Christmas break. So hopefully this Christmas break, my family can do something. But I've been out of the country. My grandma is from Liverpool, England. So oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. So like we've been there before and it's really cool, but it's kind of like just different. Like mm -hmm. you really like be prepared. It's just a whole different scenery that I was young when I went and now I want to go back because I can do so much more. Mm -hmm. Now, which team has the best college lacrosse jerseys in your opinion? Oh, I really, I don't know. I love Johns Hopkins because I love I their colors. Too. Same, especially I, the black and blue. That's really cool. Yeah, alternate. Like, yeah, it's perfect. And then JMU purple, you yeah, can't beat it. That's but good too. Obviously, teal is like, I'm. I hope we get all teal jerseys and like uniforms. That would be really cool. Yeah, I agree. Those are cool as well. Um, I would say of Denver is cool because they have the mountains on it as well and then obviously for me it's always John Hopkins I think they have the best one but I mm -hmm. will say I think you guys have one of the best fields in college lacrosse I like the different oh. color turf I feel like that's sort of unique compared to other places it's so funny teams will walk on for like our games and I'll just like kind of overhear them they're like it's gonna be really hard to see the ball like it's so bright on this turf and I'm like you'll be fine like it's not bad but it's like so fun to play on and our stadium's huge too so it's yeah. like you feel like you're the football team oh exactly exactly yeah now, two more non-lacrosse questions one is uh who is your celebrity crush oh my gosh i don't even like have a celebrity crush this is weird probably jacob alordi from euphoria I don't know. I'm like not really into celebrity cross. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah, last non lacrosse question is uh, what would be your perfect day? Like, if you had, could do whatever you want for a day, uh, what would that entail for yourself? Okay. Mine would be waking up, working out with my teammates, but it's like a really good workout and I feel really good and we have so much fun and like play a little lacrosse. And then we all just go right to the beach and we sit on the beach all day and we're like surfing and we're boogie boarding and we, but we have to get um, like, what's it called? Jersey Mike's subs before we go to the beach. Mm -hmm. So we have a little lunch and then we're at the beach and then we come home and we shower and we go out to dinner on the marsh walk here in Myrtle beach and That's just hang awesome. out. That's my, like, that is my most ideal day. And then, cause I feel productive i worked out i'm at the beach with my friends and we all go out to dinner after yeah beautiful <laughs> mine's a lot different than yours it would probably be wake up go for a walk or a hike somewhere and then get back and then go play hockey outside with my friends and then watch yeah. a game after while eating like junk food at the night i just think that would be a lot of fun just i like winter i think it's a much better season than summer so i apologize if you disagree with that i just think it's more fun I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I know what, I'm not going to be a hater, I, but I was driving today and it's like a hundred degrees here right now. Yeah. And I, was, I can't wait for when like it's football season and it's like just a little chilly here. Yeah, exactly. But like, or like a sweatshirt, but shorts, but like be comfortable. Like I know I'm crazy. Yeah. 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 That's why but beach nights are cool. Like in august where it's just a little chilly at night so you can wear a sweatshirt but it's also summer so you can wear shorts on underneath the thing is mm -hmm. i thought of this take is i think summer's the most overrated season ever because it's super buggy it's super hot you're sweating there's no sports <laughs> on they're all during the off season right now where in the fall and winter there's so many sports going on with football hockey and basketball um it's a little more comfortable where you can wear a sweatshirt the fashion's a little bit better for myself I like wearing a good flannel once in a while and it's just more comfortable I feel like summer's a bit overrated 
And I know some people might not like that take, but that's one of my hot takes I have. You know what? I, I support it. I'm just a beach girl, like through and through. Like I get I it. Love, I get it. But I lo- also do love the winter and co- getting cozy, but I I see your perspective and I'm, I'm the Christmas about vibes it. the best. Come on, you can have to admit I, that though. <laughs> and like that, the good time. Like I'm with my family at that exactly. time. Exactly. So like, yeah. Oh, a break, like Christmas. It's always gonna be fun. But okay, I second it. I'm, right. I'm not a. That's good. That's good. <laughs> hopefully, not. Hopefully, everyone feels the same way as well. I don't want. I don't want to get some angry comments to me after this. Yeah. So. All right. Well, one more lacrosse question I just want to ask you was yeah. what should be done to help grow women's lacrosse from your perspective? I think things that you're doing, like things like this need to kind of be more like known and just grow more. Um, the sport is growing. I'm so glad that women's basketball is finally like getting its rep and I'm just kind of waiting for it with lacrosse. And I feel like it has seeing all these programs get like or new schools get their new programs and these great players are transferring and making these programs on the rise and on the come up um I just think more media more broadcasting more respect um and watching it grow since I was young to now and being on a podcast about lacrosse and just being on Instagram takeovers for these Instagram accounts it's just really really cool and the younger generation is looking up to you like all those little girls want to be just like me so I just I'm just trying to be the best person I can and hopefully they can follow in my footsteps and make it even bigger than I did and make a bigger impact than I am and like these other teams so that's just basically it more media Mm -hmm. more present more respect from men and all of that crap but I think we're getting there I think we're getting there yeah, I do think it's crazy because uh, I feel like all, I see all these like rankings for high school players and like mixtapes as well. I don't know if you see those on Instagram sometimes. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's crazy. I feel like you never really saw that at all um, 10 yeah. years ago. And it also makes me feel a little bit old when you see the class of like 2033, like oh. mixtapes. It's like, I don't need to see that yet. Let's wait until they're in high school at least we don't need to if i feel like there's times where people go way overboard with some of this stuff yeah. we were coaching, <laughs> um we were just coaching a camp at coastal last week and i was like what year were you guys born and they're like 2010 2011 <laughs> i'm like oh my gosh like, this i i'm too old and i'm like only i'm about to be 22 like i'm not yeah. old but feels like it because i was their age looking up to girls that were me mm-hmm. and now it's like oh, I'm that girl that was being looked up to. Like, that's, oh, it's so crazy. Full circle moment. Yeah. Well, Devin, do you have any shout outs you want to give to any of your teammates, family members, friends, and who should we have on the podcast next? I want to give a shout out to my parents because they rock um, my whole team. I think I have two people that I want to be on this. Sid McClure, she graduated from coastal and she's going to usf for her fifth year and she's just like such a great person and i wanted to hear about her like transition to that school um and kenzie blake on princeton because i grew up playing with her and she's just like my best friend and i want to hear her like life like i want to hear her lacrosse thoughts in life because she had a great season this past Mm -hmm. year so those two girls and yeah shout out to my parents because i love them (laughs) well luckily for you we already interviewed kenzie blake a couple weeks ago in the video in the podcast started up so if you want to check that out i would that would make me very happy so uh she was a great player uh and excited to see what she does uh, for princeton next year as a senior she's my girl all right i have to wow i didn't even know i guess i missed her reposting it but i need to watch that or listen to it because yeah, I grew up, her mom coached me, like, my whole life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, really nice person, too, Um, off the yeah. field, which I feel like yeah. not enough people talk about, so I have to, I want to yeah. add that as well. Awesome. Well, Devin, I just want to give you a shout out and say thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. Uh, I think you're a great player and even better person, and I really enjoyed our conversation today, and I wish you all the best stuff for next season with your team. I know you're going to do great, and yeah, I'm excited to see uh how you guys take that next step next year after winning the A Sun uh, this past season. Great. Thanks so much. I hopefully will stay in touch with you. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very 
grateful just like that you're doing this. This is amazing. Um, hopefully more people can do this. Um, and I'm super grateful for it.